Today I'm going to be looking at these two new lenses for the Mini 4 Pro from Freewell. So we have a wide angle lens and we also have an anamorphic lens. Now a wide angle lens pretty much speaks for itself, we all know what that does, but an anamorphic lens, that's an interesting one. And the thing is, I was actually doing a bit of research into sort of anamorphic lenses and anamorphic filmmaking when Freewell sent me a message saying, hey we've got a couple of new lenses for the Mini 4 Pro. Do you want to try them out? And curiosity got the better of me, so here we are. Now, a quick disclosure, I was sent these lenses completely for free by Freewell. I've not been paid in any way for this video, and my opinions are my own, and I can say whatever I want about them. So I've been trying them out for the past couple of weeks, getting a good feel for them. There are a few things that you need to bear in mind if you're going to be buying and using these filters, so I'm going to get into that in just a few seconds. But let's start with what actually comes in the pack. So if you decide to go and pick up these new lenses, what you actually get is you get the anamorphic lens, you get the wide-angle lens, and then you also get five ND filters which you can put on the front of the lenses to help you maintain those optimal cinematic settings. So you get an ND 16, 32, 64, 128 and 256. And as usual we get a really nice carrying case from Freewell with a microfiber cleaning cloth as well. Moving on from that let's talk about actually fitting the lenses. Now they go on exactly the same as you would fit an ND filter to the Mini 4 Pro so to remove them you just tilt anti-clockwise and then pull them off and to fit them put them on at a slight angle tilt it clockwise till it clicks into place and that is done. Now to fit the ND filters on the front, it's really simple. All you have to do is just line up the little tabs on the side with the corresponding slots and then just push it on till it clicks into place. And then to remove them, all you have to do is give them a little pull and they pop right off. Now something you need to bear in mind is when you're fitting these to the Mini 4 Pro, there's a specific way you have to do this if you're gonna be powering the drone on with them fitted or without. So if you're gonna be putting this on before you turn the drone on, make sure you only fit the bare lens. Don't put an additional ND filter on because when the gimbal does its sort of turning on sweep to check it's all okay, if there's an ND filter on, it can actually catch the body of the drone throwing up a sort of gimbal calibration error. So just make sure that you only have the lens fitted, not an ND filter as well, if you're powering the drone on after you've attached it. Now, if you've already turned the drone on, you can put the whole assembly on afterwards. It's no big deal, but just make sure there's no ND filter on before you turn the drone on. So let's talk about the wide angle lens first. So from factory, the Mini 4 Pro has an 82 degree field of view, which is pretty consistent with other drones of that sort of style and spec. And with the wide angle lens attachment, we then increase that to 111 degrees field of view. So it's quite a bit bigger than the stock 82 degrees field of view. Now, you are gonna have to do some post-processing with both of these lenses. And with the wide angle lens, you're gonna wanna put in a lens distortion to correct that sort of fisheye effect that a wide angle lens is gonna give you. Now, some people don't mind the fisheye effect, in which case, leave it as it is. But if you want to sort of correct that so everything looks linear again, what you want to do, I'm going to explain this for Premiere Pro, but you can do this in lots of different editing softwares. So for Premiere Pro, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Effects tab, and then I'm going to find Lens Distortion. And then I'm going to drag that onto my footage, and I found that the value of minus 16 does a pretty good job of making everything look linear again. You are going to lose a bit of that field of view throughout this lens distortion, but it's just the price you pay in order to make everything look linear again. Now here's a bit of a comparison between the normal lens, then we have the wide angle lens with the correction applied, and then we also have the wide angle lens with no post-processing done to it. So you can see here you have sort of three different stages of how wide your shot can be. So just bear that in mind, if you want the widest possible shot, don't apply any correction, but you are going to get a bit of curvature in your footage. So moving on, we then also have the anamorphic lens. Now, anamorphic is a style of filmmaking that I've seen is sort of coming back into fashion. Now, it's a very particular look, and what it basically does, you get those cinematic black bars at the top and bottom of your footage, but anamorphic also gives you sort of stylistic lens flares and things, and that's because of the lens that you're actually using. So if you're somebody that's getting into anamorphic filmmaking or you've already doing anamorphic filmmaking, a lens like this is just gonna help you to match your drone footage up to your other cameras much more easily and much more consistently because you're using the same style of lens. Now, anamorphic footage is gonna need a bit more post-processing because when you film this in RAW, the lens actually causes the image to be stretched. So whilst you're flying and filming, everything is gonna look much taller than it actually is in real life. But to correct this, all you have to do is pull the footage into your editing software. Like again, I'm gonna show you using Adobe Premiere Pro. And then you just need to go into your effect controls and then you wanna untick uniform scale. This is so that you can stretch and compress your footage in different axis without affecting the whole ratio. So what you wanna do here is you then wanna change the height value. And I found that changing the height value to 87 on a 4K timeline gives me the correct correction factor for the anamorphic lens, giving me the black bars and making everything look correct again. Whilst I was doing a bit more editing, I also noticed that the anamorphic lens is giving a slight curvature to my footage as well. So on top of the height adjustment, I've also added 
another lens distortion with a value here of minus seven, which I felt took away the curvature and made everything look right again. So that's the total anamorphic correction you're gonna need on this lens for the Mini 4 Pro. Now, if you're not using Premiere Pro or you're unsure how to actually get the correct look, what you can do is you can actually film something with an anamorphic lens that is round. Then if you pull that footage into your editing software, you can then just put a round overlay on the top and then just stretch or compress the footage until it matches up and whatever you film that you know is round is appearing round in your editing software. Then you know the correction factor that you need to use going forward. And then you can just save that as a preset by right clicking on the effect and then clicking save as preset. And then you can just drag and drop this onto all your footage in the future. It's gonna really speed up that editing workflow further down the line. Okay, so I'm now gonna show you some footage that I captured using these lenses. And in my time using them, I found them to be of really nice, high quality lenses. The footage has been fantastic. Obviously with this being a wide angle and an anamorphic lens, you're gonna have to do a bit more post-processing in your editing software. But if you're not afraid of that, these might be something that you wanna look at. So I'm gonna show you some footage now showing you the normal lens, the wide angle lens, and then also the anamorphic lens. So you can see how they all look. So yeah, here we go. Okay, there you go. You've now seen the footage, you know how to use them. If you want to pick up these for yourself, I'll leave some links down in the description to where you can pick these guys up. I've had no issues as well with them sort of being on the front there. They are heavier than normal ND filters, but they're the same way as like the DJI wide angle lens. And when you're using them, you'll just get a little notification in the top left hand of your screen saying wide angle lens fitted, but there's no extra sort of adverse strain on the gimbal. It's been absolutely fine. There's nothing to worry about in that aspect of things. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about using ND filters along with these anamorphic and wide angle lenses, go and check out this video right here. I'll give you a full run through of how to use ND filters. And if you want to learn how to make your Mini 4 Pro even more cinematic, this video right here is going to tell you all of that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.